Hi, everyone, and welcome to this special edition conversation concerning our holiday campaign causes for 2023. The theme for this year, as you can see behind us, is that nothing will be impossible. And this is something that the angel Gabriel spoke to Mary during his conversation with her concerning the coming of Jesus. And we believe that with all of the things that we need to do to serve God and serve his people, that because of folks like you, nothing will be impossible. All of the needs that we are going to, through this podcast, help you all get a picture of as big as they can seem when we are on our own or maybe a small group of us. We know that with all of us coming together by faith and doing what we can, we're going to be able to see what seems impossible become possible. And we're back for another holiday cause for our 2023 GOD International Holiday Campaign. And this one is with respect to, wait for it, church planning. (laughs) Yes. Now, I I think for us as a ministry, when people think about church planting, they may not associate that with Global Outreach Developments International. That's true. We haven't had typically that in our, our vein that, yeah. that people go, oh, they're blowing up the world with all these churches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, <laughs> not, we're, we're not a, a typical church yeah. planning ministry. Yeah. And by the way, these are my friends, Jason Carpenter hey. and Skylar Osseby. Hello, everybody. Now, guys, <laughs> that being the case, this, this conversation here is to help people get an idea about how it is that we have been church planning, right. though we haven't utilized that terminology yeah. over the years. Very true. I, I think it's easy for someone to say you you don't you don't have any um any churches if we don't use the term church. Mm-hmm. Right. It's an easy thing yeah. to uh, mistake. However, a big part of our ministry's focus from the outset was that we wouldn't just have churches or or name buildings churches, right. but that we would be the church. Right. Yeah. And being the church is definitely uh, in the vein mm-hmm. of who it we is. are as a ministry. Absolutely. Even in the early days, I remember people saying like, y'all don't have a church over there. And I'd be like, well, <laughs> you know, we, we gather routinely. Mm-hmm. Right. We worship together. We pray together. We have preaching and table study the Bible together. We yeah. have table fellowship. Yeah. We, we take care of the needy in our community. Mm-hmm. Like, how are we not a church? All of the criteria right. was there. Yeah. It just didn't have the building really to establish it in the way initially, people think yeah. about it. Initially the building, right. but yeah. also the even title. just the title, yeah. Yeah. right? Just the naming of it. I, I know that for me, there was a sensitivity because at the when this ministry started in the middle of the 90s, there was a big emphasis on church planning. Mm-hmm. If oh, you were going to go, yeah, if you were going to go to post-secondary education or seminary, you're likely going to want to focus on church planning. At that time, it was all about Mm -hmm. demographics and figuring out which city is going to have the next big growth and then how it is that you can plant yourself in that city with this new industry or whatever. a race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) There there seemed to be like a, a, like it was the game of risk and race and everyone's going to be like putting their little flags all over yep. <laughs> where we were going to be planting churches. And I don't think there was anything inherently no, bad to not that. Bad. It's not bad. But I did notice that um, the processed effort to plant a church seemed real similar to like opening up a franchise of yeah. McDonald's or... Starbucks. Starbucks. Yeah. <laughs> Global Starbucks. Right. Yeah, yeah. You, you, know, you know, definitely st- hit that. I, I think at that time, you know, Starbucks is the thing now. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like but back then it was like uh, Subway. I remember Subway was <laughs> Subway. opening oh, yes. up all, all over, over the, place. the place. But, you know, there's a problem when your church strategy, your church planning strategy mirrors Subway's strategy yeah. for franchise right. expansion, you know, and... Uh, uh, again, I, I really hope people don't hear that, uh, <laughs> like the, the negative parts or of what I'm not saying. Right. Because right. I'm not saying that um, uh, all, all, anybody who did anything like this or something similar to that is evil and terrible. Not at all. No. Right. What I'm saying is that during that time when that was happening, I, I wanted us as a ministry to really focus on what it meant to be the church mm-hmm. and and to develop an understanding based upon our experience as a community as to how we could even share what it was that God was doing with and among us yeah. Yeah. A, as we grew. And um, at, at a certain point, 
uh, our church planning efforts, though again, not entitled church planning, right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, started to take place, particularly for us in the developing world right? and uh, in the different regions where in which we work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we would have, again, the same kind of thing, community gatherings, prayer, yeah. worship, all the things that make up church, yet without the title. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Several years ago, um, when all of a sudden everybody started uh, deconstructing, mm-hmm. right? Like <laughs> the, the idea that yeah. like I grew up with my Christianity and my churchianity or whatever, yeah. and I got church hurt, and now I need to deconstruct. And I'm not mad if you got church hurt, and I'm yeah. mad at that. Uh, please don't hear what I'm not saying. <laughs> hear what we're saying here. During that time, um, I, I just I just started noting how like uh, that ex evangelical movement people wanted to get mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Uh, even churches started changing the names of their churches right. instead of uh, First Baptist Church or Bible Community Church. Mm-hmm. Started turning into Lakewood Gathering Center mm-hmm. or the yeah. place. The, <laughs> the place. <laughs> which, which again, yeah. we're not mad at you if you go to the place yeah, or, or cool. something like that. <laughs> it's fine. And just observing the historical trend that. People wanted to get that church name out of things yeah. Yeah. because yeah. of the connotations of it. Yeah, it became a stigma. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but for us, it was at that time where it's like, now, mm-hmm. now we want to put the, the label <laughs> on it. Because we get yeah. a chance to define who we are Yeah, and without being subject to how everybody thinks. And that was the effort initially, yeah. right? We wanted, yeah. to, we wanted to be the church independent of having the label on it. Yeah. Right. Right? Uh, I... I, I read this parable by the philosopher Kierkegaard where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, summarize it. Basically, he says there's this uh, guy who went to go get a loan at the bank, uh, s- said that he himself was on a million-dollar estate and um, just wanted to figure out how he could take the equity that he's built and and expand. And the, the banker, mm-hmm. of course, was like, this is going to be great. Yeah, uh, I'd love to have you as a client. So he, he heads out to the address where the property's at, and he gets there. And the guy who'd been, you know, telling everybody about his million dollar estate uh, was nowhere to be seen. Uh, now there was a, a lot of open space, hmm. uh, but he finally sees a structure up at the top of the hill. When he gets closer, he notices it's a shack. It's, it's nothing. So he just thinks maybe he can ask this person who's living here. Well, he gets closer, and sure enough, the guy comes out and he's like, "Welcome to my place." <laughs> invites okay. him in, and he's super confused as they're sitting on these milk crates. And uh, he's, as a banker, he's wondering what is happening here. Yeah. And the, the guy uh, tells him that indeed he, he is a millionaire, but it's, it's, it's by faith. Hmm. And that's where he needs the banker's help <laughs> yeah. so that he could, <laughs> he could be that actual yeah. thing. And of course, the, the banker sitting on the milk carton is rightly confused. Yeah. Right. And, I, and I, I think part of the point of that parable is to identify that sometimes we label ourselves with something, like we say we're the church, mm. but we lack the visible signs yeah. to actually right. communicate. Because yeah. in truth, a person who has a million dollar estate or a multi-million dollar estate, they don't need to tell anyone they have it. Right. No, you see it. You see it. It's, it, there. it's there. It's obvious. So I think for us at the outset, we wanted to be the church in such a way that all of it was there. Yeah. But when when times changed and people started getting ashamed of that, yeah. uh, labeling or or didn't want to be connotated with mm-hmm. it yeah. for whatever reasons, that was when we decided we, we need to be yeah. because yeah. we now have some confidence yeah. about how it is that God has shaped us, right. how he's grown us, and that we've developed a model that we want to share with others. And so yeah, it, it, it did start in a, in a formal fashion um, about five years ago where we started helping our even developing world communities understand themselves in the mm-hmm. way that we've come to understand yeah. ourselves as a church. Mm-hmm. And it was this last year that God led us to start formally planting churches and that's what this cause is about this cause is about needing your help to effectively train the pastors and leaders of these different congregations but also to provide the kind of resources Mm -hmm. that are going to make the community of believers in these respective churches have a sustainable and exemplary experience before the watching world within which they've been planted yeah. themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So um, part of uh, part of how we do that is, uh, it, it, I, I would say it's unique. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm not, it, it's biblical, but it's, yeah. it's unique. Yeah. It's unique. And um, 
I, I, I kind of want to share a little bit of that with you here so you get an, an idea of how we do church planning. But before I do that, I, I think it would be good, uh, Jason, if you could share with us about how our community here, we have a saying, what we do here is what, what we, we do, do there. there. Yeah. And um, our communities are even abroad having to come into an understanding of themselves as well as a church. Tell us a little bit about Tahanan, what it means, what's been going on there, yeah. and how that operates as a church, how they are being the church. Yeah, absolutely. So Tahanan is a Tagalog word for home, and mm -hmm. it's meant to give the impression or the idea that, hey, this place isn't just a building you come to, and there's like certain parameters of what you're supposed to experience here, but it's supposed to be a home. Um, and just like we were sharing before, we didn't want to just say, hey, this is a church, come to our service on Monday and Wednesday, and people came in with their preconceived notions, but mm, right. it was rather an organic growth of meeting needs in the community. So at first there was a lot of young people coming around, so we started a young people's Bible study. Well, then those young people's mothers were looking for a Bible study. Mm. So Rena Miller, one of our cooperatives, was like, well, I want to start a Bible study for, for women. So she started that. Well, then they couldn't come consistently because they had young kids. So then we started Tahani Kids so we could have like <laughs> a, a kids program so their mothers could come to Bible study. Mm -hmm. um, and now we have all these different demographics. And as you were highlighting the organic rise of yeah. that, you know, th there are churches who when they, they set out, they're like, okay, we, we want to have a Bible study, so we know we need to have kids programming. Mm -hmm. You know, they, 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 they have the plan and the yeah. blueprint yeah, for how to exactly. implement that. But you're, you're right. And this story mirrors what hap what's happened in all of our different regions. Exactly. That very organic upcoming of the community church. Yeah, and it feels good when you know you're, you're actually meeting needs. Like, you're not having to convince young people hey, come to my ministry. Yeah. It's like, oh, it grew out of what we were already doing as a community center there. Yeah. Um, and it's it's awesome. Now it's growing a lot, and I look forward for it to grow more into the future. Yeah. And I, I would say, and Skylar, I, I think you and I just recently coming from East Africa yeah. during the summer, and I, I was able to go um, even this October, but um, you know how much opportunity exists out there for us in Kenya and Uganda oh right now. It's unbelievable. The yeah. amount, so the, the, just the way God has worked in East Africa, similarly, mm -hmm. you know, how God has, has touched people's hearts and has grown into a thing where people want to learn God's word. And that's where we have the opportunity in the church. And this summer, getting to see people's desire, people that we weren't connected with. Yeah have a desire to really be connected to the Lord and they are already in churches Yeah, mm -hmm. and they're leaders of churches yeah. and they're like, how do we do this mm -hmm. so we can have that with our people? And it's like, God just kind of opened this barn door and it was like, <laughs> hey, there's lots of stalls here. <laughs> like, we got to put people in position yeah. to be able to, to teach these people. Yeah. 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 So there, there are two aspects to our church planning effort. One mm -hmm. is called... The community church for God. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. these are our churches that are part of our denomination. And these these community churches, um, they are going to have a pastoral team mm -hmm. that is modeled after the way in which we've been doing church here mm -hmm. in Nashville, which yeah. we believe uh, has all biblical precedent. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and they're going to have programming that is concerned with the well-being of the community which, and this is where, yeah, where it gets a little, it's very important. This is where it gets a little different. In, instead of just um, being available to folks on like a Sunday and Wednesday through the preaching of the word, which is essential and definitely is happening, yeah. we are also ensuring that the congregation is getting opportunities to further education, mm -hmm. have their basic needs met, mm -hmm. and, and not through some kind of mere and, and not that a benevolence fund is bad, but it's it, it's sometimes not sustainable oh, to yeah. meet the breadth of needs that right. exist in these yeah. developing world Absolutely. countries. But instead, there's an, an educational empowerment mechanism yeah. that mm -hmm. exists in our church to even do something as profound as create jobs. Mm -hmm. And um, that's a big part of what's going on in Kenya and Uganda right yeah. now. Yeah. And I'll explain more about that here in a, a second. But before I get back to our community churches, there's also the Community for God Network, or CGN, which is other churches who are pre-existing, who themselves have like a conviction for a mission and vision that yeah. they're implementing on behalf of the Lord, but they recognize their lack, particularly with respect to biblical education. Yeah. So CGN is a network 
that allows all kinds of churches to gather together and receive the kind of Bible teaching that our ministry has become very well known for. Yeah. And um, that that's a really exciting element. And we have several hundred churches hmm. that are part Waiting of Waiting and excited to, yeah. to learn. Yeah, wow. yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. super excited. Yeah. Super awesome. Now, on the other side here, these community <laughs> churches, the difference between them and the network is that over here, these guys are are, are getting everything of who we are and what we're doing in, into a, a a process and a system that we will that we contextualize mm -hmm. into their country, but he, here's here's how it kind of works pragmatically. Let's say we're in Uganda, and in Uganda we have a village, and in that village we there's there's a leader there that we know has been trying to do something um, for the Lord, and maybe it's mm -hmm. been a Bible study. Well, after vetting that leader and then putting them through some foundational courses with our ministry. We now decide to walk alongside that leader to develop a, a church community mm -hmm. in that area. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the identification of a, a structure so that there's an actual place yeah, for so gathering together, yeah. and then also the, the the development of a leadership team and a core a core group is is the next phase. Mm -hmm. But again, this includes because Jesus, in talking to Peter. Um, let them know that if, if you love me, then you're going to take care of my sheep. If yeah. you love me, you're going to tend to my lambs. Mm -hmm. So a, a good reading of scripture will help us understand that taking care of the sheep and tending to the lambs is, um, yes, it starts with the teaching of the word and giving mm -hmm. people that kind of bread from heaven, but also it expands yeah. into the totality of their well-being, mm -hmm. their, their social health, their emotional health, their physical health, even their economic health. Mm -hmm. And so our churches then become this this hub yeah. for the community members who are part of that congregation to model for the rest of everybody watching how it is that God could move so as to drastically transform mm -hmm. their lives holistically, yeah. including the economics of it. So job yeah. creation is a big part of our church planning effort yeah. because we recognize that if you have people learning together, growing together, worshiping together, and then you can get them working together, yeah. like that is yeah, a, it's unbelievable. That's a powerful yeah. formula. And how do we know that? We've done it. We've been being <laughs> yeah. it. We've been <laughs> we've being been doing it, it for twenty five plus yeah. years. Yeah. And um, I, I think if people know us and they know our ministry, yeah. they have to say, "Yeah, it is special. That mm -hmm. is something for sure." Well, this wasn't done in vain. This is, wasn't yeah, you know. Yeah. Th that's what the Bible tells us. Unless the Lord builds a house, the labors labor in vain. God's been building this ministry. And God's yes, building absolutely. these churches. And so a big part of this cause is getting you guys on board with understanding that at the outset, there's some necessary resources for us to be doing oh, our actually, church planting. Yeah. I, I yeah. think one of the, the most uh, initially, and this is where your realm is, is the technology element. Oh, yeah. yeah, Being able to enhance communications, specifically with phones and for yep. some specific leaders, computers. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, t tell us a little bit about what you've observed happens when we get into the hands of these developing world leaders, this type of technology and empower them on how to use it. Well, when we have an opportunity to get it to them, uh, there are some opportunities for them to have internet in, in different locations. Oftentimes it's difficult um, to get streaming um, dialogues going, video chats at least. Yeah. Yeah. So that's been a difficulty and uh, being able to get uh, necessary uh, internet speeds to them so that we can have video chats where you can do education remotely mm -hmm. is an important aspect. But when they get a hold of technology, they often at first don't really know how to utilize it, not because of anything inherent to them. They just didn't have access right. to it before. So this is, uh, it's a learning process, but by, on the other side of that, the access and communication that they can have with us as well as one another mm -hmm. opens up a whole new vein for them to be able to and work through issues. And it's the kind of issues. things we kind of take, uh, take for granted oh, in, in our time, right? Like these guys now are able to let people know that a certain need emerged yeah. or, or to mm -hmm. pray for a certain brother or sister yep. whose kid's gone to the hospital. Right. Like they're, they're able to um, use that technology uh, to even... Um, in, enhance their job opportunities yeah. with, with that technology, right? So it, it's a it's a it's a really cool thing. But that's that's one area where we we need help getting them the appropriate technology. They yeah. need also the training that For they sure. need as leaders. Uh, a lot of these folks have the heart 
they have the calling, mm-hmm. but they don't know how to implement all of that passion. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so giving them some structure for training uh, so that they can effectively implement is is an important part of what we're doing in our, our church planning. Mm-hmm. Also, we're providing Definitely. for them um, opportunities to transform their community. Because for us, uh, for our churches, just like what we've done here, again, yeah. don't ever forget yeah. what we do here is well, what, what we, we do, do there. there. <laughs> and when you think of our church here, yeah, think about everybody in the neighborhood who's benefited from what's happened here with our body of Christ, <laughs> right? right? Uh, realtors have, have been able to overprice oh homes my gosh, yes. uh, because their, their selling point is that the church over there, they've got a garden mm-hmm. and they've got a coffee yeah. shop. And they've got a school. If you want your kids to go, there's a private school and there's a college right. and they do adult learning classes. Yep. And they there's a sports program, a recreational sports program. Mm-hmm. And they do fall festivals and summer movie programs. All of that stuff mm-hmm. is yeah. what our churches are doing around the world. But it, it, it they need they need help at the, yeah. outside, at the outset. The goal yeah, is not to do. create dependence. Right. The goal is to create the kind of interdependence that doesn't require um, the as as development all um, efforts typically require, and that's aid from the West. Mm-hmm. Right. Instead, um, we are through that education empowerment, getting these guys into a place where that interdependence happens, where we can ask from them and they can bless us, and yeah. we, they can ask from us. And and this is this is a. Uh, a part of the vision that even Mary was able to sing about with the mm-hmm. coming of Jesus, mm-hmm. that the yeah. mountains would come yeah. down and the valleys that would raise up, for sure. that there would be this equalizing that takes place between all kinds of peoples because of who Jesus is. Yeah. And as as we're just excited to be planning yeah. these churches, but not only are we doing it abroad, we're actually doing it here in the United States. Our newest yes. church plant yep. was actually a, a merger of a community church that existed in Morristown, Tennessee, which is yeah. in East Tennessee, mm-hmm. and it's a Hispanic church. Um, uh, everybody there speaks yeah, Spanish, which is awesome. and um, we're actually in a land search right now, looking for how we can give them a per- permanent piece of property hmm. where in which we will have a K through twelve school and all of the things. Because yeah. what we do here what is we do here is what, what we, we do, do there, there. <laughs> and um, it, it's it's just super exciting because. The, the pastoral family and the staff there mm-hmm. are so full of faith and yeah. ready to go forward with what it is that God's called them to do. Mm, yeah, they, they're, they're enrolled in classes right now, getting yep. trained mm-hmm. up, and um, they're, they, their kids are doing the academy home education online program. Mm-hmm. But they're, they've caught the vision enough to recognize that this could be transformative mm-hmm. for the community in their area. And yeah. so we, we actually have um, other other people and existing churches that want to be a part of our church planning effort of our denomination with the church community for God, um, who are at first starting with CGN, because yeah. this is where we get to know them. Yeah. We get yep. to know them through yep. the, the network, and um, there's there's a whole process, because we want our churches that are being planted over here to have demonstrable success, yeah. oh, because they have to. The, the, yeah, the, the, Jesus said that they may see yeah. your good works right. and glorify the Father in heaven. Like the there, there has to be some again visible, demonstrable, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, good work that's yeah. happening in that area, and it's hard to ensure that takes place with people who you're, you're kind of new to. Yeah. So yeah. there, 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 there is a process to getting the right people into the right position to make sure that we have the right kind of pastors and leaders for our churches. But gosh, this is at the heart mm-hmm. of of the apostolic ministry that exists in Absolutely. the New Testament, right. that you get to go into communities and transform those, yep. those communities yeah. through a righteous presence of people who believe in Jesus. Yeah, we're, and, yeah. and that's what this cause is about. Yeah, and we're seeing some of that fruit in the Philippines. We're getting recognition from uh, the Ministry of Education, from... Uh, the Department of Corrections, where are the people that are involved in our church there are doing ministry, and the government is saying thank you, like thank you for making yeah. a difference in this community. And that wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for the body of believers that yeah. is established there. I think sometimes people yeah. they they look at our ministry and they go, oh, they're that nonprofit organization, Global Outreach Development International, which is true. Mm-hmm. That's the association by which we're identified. But you you, you can't. People get confused about us because they, they they start looking at all of who we are and they're like, that's a little more than just being an organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's because we're the church. Right. Right. And and this is who we've always been. Mm-hmm. And the church always defies categories. <laughs> yeah. And um yeah. it's it's just so exciting to be at a place in the history of our yeah. ministry where 
we we can now uh, do what we've been doing this whole episode here, and that's saying like these the, these plans. Like I'll often talk to these pastors, and I'll say, "You guys need to know your future is our past." Hmm. Yeah. You know, like we're we're not here bringing up some kind of untested idea. Right. Like, yeah. Like like we've never done this before. For sure. Yeah. Like we we God has blessed us mm-hmm. with the experience to be able to say, "Let's go. Let's yeah. we we we've, we've done this. Yep. Let's do it again. Let's yep. do it in a in a new context." And uh, it's so different than a lot of the church planning ministries that are out there. Where, because I hear people all the, all the time say they planted five hundred churches in the last three years. I guarantee you, they didn't. Oh. <laughs> I guarantee I don't you know what how happened. You would. You can't. Yeah. I guarantee you what happened was five hundred people said they have a church now. Yeah. And then start having people there. And it's it's it's. I just want to highlight. It's very different than what we're talking about. Right. Yeah. It's very different. Like we, we our our churches. Are, are going to uh, look like who, how God's made us. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's exciting. And we're inviting you guys into that. So I want to give, uh, Jason, I'm going to give you an opportunity to, yeah. to talk to the folks and and um, compel them to give to this cause. And then Skylar, I'll give you that op- same opportunity. Yeah, I would just say uh, we are seeing the fruit from our body of Christ in the Philippines and in all the regions we work in. And we want to see more of that. Um, you know, we're really proud of the way that we've been able to and in, like in, educate people in God's word, and that's not possible without your help. Um, and I don't know a better of a better investment that we could be making mm-hmm. than into our communities than to making people more like God and giving them the opportunity to raise their families in a church mm-hmm. where they come to know God better as a family. And for me, I I'm just super compelled by that. I'm proud to be a part of it, and I want you on the other side of this camera to be a part of it too because I know. That it's the best thing that we can do. That's awesome. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, you need to get involved in what it is that we're doing because this is not something that is disconnected from God's vision for his people. Mm-hmm. Uh, God has, has brought us together here to work in the way that God has raised us. And we're trying to offer that to other people who are hungry for God's word, yeah. hungry for that kind of education. And then you get to watch it uh, envelop the family. It's not just the kids. It's mm-hmm. not just the parents. It's it's the family that it gets to affect. And by that association of family with other families connected, it becomes this body of believers that are that are supporting one another. And the way that it s- affects the surrounding um, peoples is fantastic. Like in in our ministries in uh, East Africa, they're helping the widows. They're taking care of the schools that are nearby, and they're mm-hmm. acknowledged by those different people groups as being people who are generous, being people who are, are loving and sincere, and God's uh, continuing to do His work. Get involved. Get invested. Become a part of what God is doing. This is history happening, mm. and you can be a part of it. Thank you, guys. So in summary, we are church planning. Yeah. And some of these are part of the Community for God network of which we are equipping pastors and leaders with the Word of God mm-hmm. to more effectively support and train and, and teach their congregations. But also, mm-hmm. we have our community churches for God that um, are opportunities for what's happening here to happen there. And it's with these churches that not only will we see that education that comes from God's word going forth, but also the worship and and the support that communities who are spiritually uh, gathered together in the name of Jesus are to bless and embody by their presence in their respective larger mm-hmm. communities. Yeah. I, I can't wait for us to tell you guys the stories of how our churches yeah. are impacting the larger communities within which they're working. But we need your help to mm-hmm. get there. Yeah. What your help will do is it'll help us to train these pastors and leaders in the Community for God Network, and then also help in the merger type uh, costs for existing churches that are now part of the Church Community for God, mm-hmm. and like the ones in Morristown, but also for the new churches based upon leaders who have come up through our education system who are ready now to introduce a church community for God in their respective village or area. So please pray about this. And we are believing that God is going to bless this effort as we see his kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is is in in heaven. heaven. God bless you guys. (laughs)